Today we'll be talking about keyboard shortcuts and how they can help you become a faster animator. However, it's not all about hitting deadlines and pumping out content. Having a well-defined workflow will let you actually enjoy animating instead of just struggling with your software. And you don't need to memorize every single shortcut. Knowing just the shortcuts for basic actions and the tools that you use the most will already make a big difference. With that said, let's start with the absolute basics. You can pan around the stage by holding down spacebar or by using the middle mouse button. This also works on the timeline, but only with spacebar. Moving on, most tools have keyboard shortcuts by default and you can hover above its icon in the toolbar to see it. If I hover over the classic brush tool over here, you can see that its keyboard shortcut is B. Then there are tool specific shortcuts. For example, when a drawing tool like the classic brush is selected, you can use the square brackets to change the size of your brush as shown in the properties panel. This will work with most drawing tools as long as it has a brush or stroke size. So it will work with the line tool, the shape tool as well, because the shape tool has a stroke size surrounding the shape. If I use the square brackets, it will make that stroke larger. But no matter what tool you're using, holding down the command modifier key will give you quick access to the selection tool. As an example, I'll press B to switch to the classic brush tool, draw some lines, and now when I hold command, I can quickly select and reposition the drawing, then go straight back to drawing when I let go of the command key. On a similar note, the other keyboard modifiers also have their own use cases. Let's talk about the shift modifier first. Holding shift while repositioning an object will lock it to the horizontal, vertical, or diagonal axis, which is useful if you're trying to move an object in a perfectly straight line. This also applies when you're drawing. As you can see, my brush strokes immediately lock to the horizontal or vertical axis when I hold shift. When it comes to selecting objects, holding shift lets me add to my selection instead of starting a new one every time I click on something else. I'll hit delete to get rid of those. And let's look at this shape over here. I'm resizing it now. With nothing held down, it resizes freely, but holding shift while resizing or creating shapes will lock its proportions. And holding shift before you rotate will also lock the rotation to 45 degree angles. Next, we have the option key. Whether you're working on the stage or the timeline, holding option while you click and drag will let you duplicate the selected object or keyframe. Like so. The option key also comes into play when rotating or resizing a shape, mainly by changing the shape's anchor point. For example, you can see that this shape is scaling around its center point by default. However, if I hold option, the shape scales and rotates from the opposite corner. In this case, since I've grabbed the top left handle, the anchor point becomes this bottom right corner over here. Keep in mind that you can use both the option and shift modifier keys at the same time when you're rotating or you're scaling or even when you're duplicating a shape. Moving on, let's look at some of the timeline shortcuts. F5, F6, and F7 inserts a frame, keyframe, or blank keyframe. If you press F5 or F6 while holding shift, it does the exact opposite and removes the keyframe or frame, or frames if you've selected a whole bunch of them. And don't forget that you can easily duplicate entire selections of frames and keyframes by clicking and dragging while holding option. When it comes to moving around the timeline, less than and more than will let you move between frames and holding option extends that, letting you jump between keyframes. For playback, instead of clicking the play button, you can press return or enter to play through your animation. And finally, here's a couple bonus shortcuts that I use regularly. Command G groups your current selection, which I find pretty useful for separating rough drawings on one single layer. F8 works in a similar way, but it creates a symbol instead of a group. And Command B, on the other hand, breaks objects apart, 
So you can use that to break the groups and symbols apart whenever you're done with them. And that rounds up what I think are some of the most useful default shortcuts. And don't worry if it seems like there's just too many to remember. As I mentioned at the start of the video, knowing just one or two of these that you use fairly often will already make a fairly big difference. I think I said fairly twice. If I've missed a keyboard shortcut that you use a lot and you find useful, leave it in the comments. Someone else might benefit from that. And as always, thank you for watching. <sighs> Goodbye.